All right, hey everybody, welcome to the Chew Stream. Hope everybody's doing awesome today. Uh, just wanted to give a big shout out to everybody that participated in last week's. Uh... Oh wait, can everybody hear me? Okay, so yeah, just wanted to give a big shout out to everybody that participated in last week's stream had a lot of really great entries, a lot of really great submissions. Not really entries, but just submissions, you know, people that want to show, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing the exercises, and uh, staying artistically fit. That's one of the most important things. So I want to just start off by giving a little bit of instruction to this exercise here. So you can download this template from uh, the link below that you see in uh, the link below there in the post and um, for people that are watching this off of YouTube you can see a pop-up link or you can go into the comments below but definitely you know download this if you want to paint along with me it's going to be a monochromatic painting here Okay, which means that you're going to be using different tones, yes, different amounts of saturation, yes, and just one hue this time. And you see, for all the streamers that have been just going along with me since the very beginning, you can see that what I'm doing is first I'm starting off with structure, right? We do a bunch of exercises all dealing with structure. Then we went on to lighting, composition, different aspects of structure, adding in the element of light in there, and then focusing on that in many different ways from drawing heads to drawing compositions to different kinds of compositions. And now we're bringing in another element, a whole other dimension, which is how saturated should these tones be? So now it's not just about structure and tones, but it's about how saturated should these different tones be. And just by adding in that one little extra question that we have to go through in our heads it's going to add on a whole new dimension of difficulty of challenge okay so that's the whole entire plan here um, those are the rules each one of these little compositions you're going to be doing them in a monochromatic way you can only pick one hue and you're messing around with light shadow saturation okay so let's begin and as you can see here um, first you gotta think of an idea so right now I'm really just thinking of an idea I'm thinking of a little person a little figure it's doing something I made it red at first because I'm thinking because of the size I want to add on um, importance to that little figure so made it more saturated and this way it'll stand out more and uh, before we go on even further I just wanted to give a big shout out to Marina first time on the stream so happy right on and all of those out there that are listening so let us know where you're from and I'll be happy to give you a shout out also, something that's really important is if you have any questions, okay? If you have any questions, please, please write question in capital letters before um, you go on. And big shout out to Richard. It's his first time here as well. Belgium. People are giving shouts out from Belgium, Edmonton, Spain, Quebec, Sweden, Kelowna. BC, Paris, Malaysia, Brazil, Barcelona, Austin, Italy, right on, Belarus, South Africa, all over the place, Poland, right on. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat by putting in a uh, question, starting off the question with the word question in big capital letters so I can see it in the uh, chat there. And then, of course, there's 
Holland, uh, Philippines, New Hampshire, Dallas, all over the place, right on. So start off with me. We're going to be going through as many little compositions as we can in the hour that we have together. Oh, Taiwan, right on. That's where I was born. You know, so time's, you know, time's ticking. It's going to be, uh, you're going to want to use your time very, very valuably, okay? Now, the other thing that you want to, if you are comfortable with this exercise, the other thing that you definitely want to keep in mind is what are you going to paint there? What is a great idea? Okay, a big part of this, I just want to go back to a big part of this, is the whole entire exercise of visualizing before you draw. Visualizing the things that you want to paint, how you want this thing to look before you actually start to paint it. Okay, and uh, that one's a huge one because that tends to play a huge part in how you start off your painting. These are all going to be monochromatic paintings, right? Only one hue. So you want to think about, well, what is the majority of this painting going to be? What's the main idea here? Right? And in order for you to come up with a good, strong main idea, you have to be able to visualize everything well, you know, at least in a fuzzy state. You know, so the whole entire idea of a dark foreground with a lighter background, that was the idea that I had, light coming from the ground upwards, perhaps indicating uh, lava of some sort. And then I was coming up with the idea of little guy versus big guy, right? And the whole entire idea of uh, perhaps the little guy is some sort of Darth something you know from Star Wars he's gonna have a red lightsaber that's what I'm thinking he's gonna be battling some big thing I don't know what it is um, but that's the idea right and a lot of times what we need to do is come up with that great idea first just a just a very fuzzy idea or as sharp as possible but fuzzy ones will do okay and it's the great idea that's shown through vast amounts of knowledge about different aspects of life. You know, glowing, what makes things glow, what makes water feel like water, what makes wind feel like wind, things like that. Describing all these complex things in simple ways. I know that's distilled into such a simple sentence, but that is the truth. Okay, so let me just... Let me just uh, say that again. Okay, amazing art equals great ideas with vast amounts of knowledge about different aspects of life, describing complex things in a very simple way. That's the magic of art. When you see stuff like that, when you see the most complex things, and then you go up to it, and it's just these very simple brushstrokes, and it's a, such a minimized amount of brushstrokes, that's when you're just like, wow. That's when the real magic happens for so many of us. Um, and especially in my profession, working on concepts, you know, just the whole entire idea of concepts, that sounds like something very fast, right? And to show very complex things in a simple way shows that you can think extremely fast and you could put it down, you could put down your interpretation of whatever you're thinking in extremely efficient ways. Okay, so let's move on to one of the first questions here, which is... Um, so the question goes, in relation to organizing the mind on storytelling, any tips? I tend to overthink. Uh, I tend to overthink a lot, and sometimes I get you stuck. Or, and sometimes it gets you stuck and makes the artwork lose the feeling. You know, um, I think 
basically everything goes back to how you feel about it, right? That initial feeling that you get from that painting or that film or whatever it is. So that's the high highest level of, uh, you know, kind of analyzing a film for me or, or a painting for me. How does it make you feel? Now, organizing all this stuff, generally, I feel like um, there's many different ways to start, but I like to start off with character. You know, what is the character before the story? And then a lot of times I find when you can come up with the character, then you just throw in situations and you think about how that character would react. And that becomes the story. Again, I'm not the best person to, you know, talk about storytelling since there's so many amazing storytellers out there, like all those amazing people at Pixar and things like that. Um, however, yeah, however, I, I do feel like um, that's, those are the things that really make me attach to uh, a show or a movie or a painting. It's it's the characters involved in there that really get to me. Okay, and a quick question here from Marks Everywhere. Goes, uh, I've been doing your creature design course. Is the brush you are using set to transfer without pen pressure? Um, the only thing I have on that brush for my uh, creature design course is shape dynamics. That's it. I will, you know, I will tweak the flow and the opacity that I'm using for certain um, situations. Of course, you know, more see-through, more or less flow, less opacity, things like that. Um, but yeah, generally I. I don't use transfer. It's clicked off. And the people that are asking, or the person that's asking about uh, if we can see this this stream in higher res, I do upload everything to um, to my YouTube page, and I'll put a link to all the other um, all the other videos that I do. Uh, when I put this on YouTube, but if you are on live stream right now, watching this live right now, you can definitely take down um, the take this down youtube.com slash digital bobbert. It's like Robert, except it starts with a B, okay? And then you'll find my YouTube page. Um, and definitely when you get on there, first thing you got to do is subscribe to the YouTube page before you forget, because that way you'll get all the newest uh, videos, okay? And then you won't miss a thing. And the way that these streams are going is that it's kind of like a curriculum. It's kind of like a workout. You know, there's all these different exercises. Do one a day. That's going to be really, really great for your abilities. Um, and it works. You know, it works. I've totally taught, you know, uh, hundreds of people by now. And if you count everybody in all the different workshops, then it would be in the thousands by now. This is a routine, a method that I've created through that experience of teaching all these people. So I know it works. Just keep at it, okay? And when you look at a painting, if this is a little bit too tough for you, go to just the normal um, grayscale compositions, okay? And you can see that the other thing I want to mention is that the compositions that I gave you, they're very, very simple. They're very, very basic for a purpose. This way you can adjust certain things 
from your composition. Just like um, how in the beginning of this composition is one small thing and one big thing, right? Now it's become one robot and one person. And uh, these compositions, they're really meant to just start you off. Okay, so don't be too concerned about following along. Uh, one little thing, one big thing could end up turning into two little things and one big thing or something like that. Uh, it's just to help you start off because isn't it just like the most frustrating thing when you're dealing with that blank canvas? This is an exercise. I don't want you to have to diddle daddle and you know not know what to paint, not know what to draw, things like that. This is just enough so that it doesn't tell you what to draw. It doesn't tell you what to paint, but it gives you a start, right? And that's a lot of times that's all we need. And you can see in the very beginning, this wasn't the robot that I was painting. It was a different thing, whatever that thing was. And it wasn't even a robot. Um, it was going to be a creature. So let these compositions, let these uh, working files that I supply for you be the starting point. These are the weights for your exercise, for your artistic exercise to stay artistically fit. Okay, so let's keep going to the next question. How do you deal with short time pressure? Sometimes I feel paralyzing to me. Short time pressures, most important thing is to take a deep breath, run through all the steps of whatever it is you need to do. Start organizing in your head how long generally are you going to take on each thing and what are the different things that you will need to do to get whatever it is done. That's going to be a very challenging thing because a lot of times, you know, short, um, short time schedules, a lot of times that doesn't bring out the best in you. But it's important. Um, to be able to deal with these things uh, in a nice calm fashion. Now some of the best opportunities come disguised when when you're up to a very tough circumstance or unfortunate circumstance or when you're defeated some of the best opportunities come at these points. So keep your eyes open. What do I mean by this? What do I mean by this? I mean, for example, I couldn't find a job before I started Imaginism Studios 10 years ago. You know, if it wasn't for that bad luck, if it wasn't for all those defeats, all those rejections, I never would have went on my own. Right, And that to me is a huge blessing because I love being independent. I love being financially independent, artistically independent. You know, it makes me feel good. Now, that's not to say that um, working in a studio isn't awesome. I'm sure that's really awesome as well. But everybody's different, right? And that's what kind of brought me the most joy. Anyways, let's go on to the next question here, which is when I asked about storytelling, I was thinking of storytelling in illustration. Like when you made the huge monster rabbit disguise, could you read a story in an image? Sorry for the confusion. Absolutely. You know, like with every story, with every joke, there is a beginning, a middle, and an end. How how is a story going to be funny if you tell the end first and then the beginning last, right? It's going to ruin the whole joke or, you know, it's going to ruin the whole emotional impact of your illustration. So the way that you make sure that a person is going to look at one thing first, another thing second, another thing third, in other words, read the story in order, is to make sure that the first thing that the person is going to see has the most contrast in the image because contrast attracts the eye 
right? So um, in the very first composition that I'm making, well, it's two things kind of battling each other for, uh, for attention. One is the big robot, which you can see, you can notice because of the sheer size of the robot, so that's going to attract a lot of contrast. The smaller thing is not going to be as contrasting. So then I put a little lightsaber in his hand. And just the amount of contrast in the values, even though it's a small thing, it's going to start attracting a lot more attention. right? So it becomes this back and forth. You're looking at the robot, then you're looking at the lightsaber, then you're looking back at the robot, so on and so forth. And that's how I'm controlling um, the eye. Okay. Now let's go on to the next question here. Okay, which is: uh, Is this the start of a regular work day for you? What is the general plan for the rest of your day? How do you go about it in pursuing your art and projects? Um, so I always say, even if it's just for a little bit, sketch for yourself in the morning. First thing that you do, just sketch for yourself in the morning. And that's something I still maintain. Okay, not every day I can sketch for an hour long. However, I will try to get it in whenever possible. Now, what is the general plan for the rest of your day? Well, my day, because I'm working on films and other projects and then I'm also working on um, schoolism live workshops as well as the online course and so on and so forth my day varies a lot from day to day um, so every day is different and how I manage it is with a really good to-do list you know I go over my to-do list every day around three or four o'clock I start to reset it for the next day because I don't want to think about and prioritize the things that I need to do in the beginning of my day it's just so exhausting and it just takes up so much time it's so much better so much more effective when you can come into work and because you already kind of went through your to-do list the day before before you left for work you come into work first thing in the morning you look at your to-do list and you just start doing the most important things and what I do is I'll highlight the most important things a shade of red and it'll get redder and redder as that thing that priority becomes more and more important um, there's actually so many things that I can tell you about organizing and things like that uh, that probably would take way too long. So let's go on to the next question. But if you have anything specific, just let me know. Okay, next question is, what would you say are the main things you should practice in or to draw better? For example, perspective. Drawing better. Drawing better... Um, Perspective, for sure. That is such a fundamental skill to understand um, and to be able to do. It's super, super theory and fundamental. After that, uh, I would start to learn how to draw things with structure. So structure as in it doesn't just all line up um, in perspective, but it also has a very realistic three-dimensional form to it okay so it feels three-dimensional not a little bit three-dimensional but it feels like you can literally just go into the page grab your drawing out and you know what kind of structure it is every little part of it um, and then another huge one is how to work with line because we're just talking about drawing in this case right so working with line to describe different types of textures that one's huge because if everything kind of just feels the same way 
and you're using a harsh line to draw your tree, you know, drawing a, a complete solid line for your tree or something like that, it'll give that tree a certain look. Sometimes this will work. A lot of times for a close-up tree, it's not going to look too hot because it's going to be just so simplified. Um, yeah, so let's go on to the next question here. I'm following your lead and stop stopping uh, chasing the job and trying to make my own thing. How can I stand out and get these important eyes on my work and follow along? Well, number one is the idea. You know, your idea needs to be strong. And the way that you know your idea is strong is the emotional impact it has on a person. Okay, so if it's funny, are people just kind of, you know, one side of their mouth kind of goes up a tiny bit, gives a tiny little smirk? Or are they busting their gut laughing? And the best person to kind of see if this is what's happening is not your friends, it's not your family, but perhaps your friend's friend that has no idea who you are, what you do, and probably has no idea about art itself. You know, a lot of times these are the people to ask because if you can get them to react very highly to your art, then that means that your art it, it has a very it has a much higher chance of being absolutely viral. And when things are viral, that's when everybody starts to see them, right? And that's when um, this whole entire idea of of finding work through your art as opposed to finding work from simply trying to find work. That's when this idea really comes into play. Because if your art doesn't spread and you're trying to find work through your art, you're not going to do a good job. Because it needs to spread to find you some work. So I'm always thinking about that as well. That the idea needs to be super good. Okay, now, a lot of times people, you know, they're looking for work, they're looking for work, they're looking for work. It's scary to stop looking for work, right? Because it's like, how is that going to, I don't get it. How is that going to work for me? How am I going to find work if I'm not looking for work and all I'm doing is painting and drawing and putting on the internet? Well, a lot of times, um, we got to think, doesn't make sense to us. Number one, don't follow other people's conclusions. Don't follow my conclusions. Hear other people's conclusions. Think about if it makes sense to you first. Then if it does make sense to you, I don't care if you don't want to do it. I don't care if you're scared. Because we all get scared. We all don't want to do things that are good for us. If it makes sense to you, then you got to do it. Okay, you got to do it. And if there is a fear that comes with that, I just want you to just take a chance. Think about what what could be the worst thing that can happen. And then what's the best thing that can happen? And using those two variables, decide if the thing is still makes sense to do. Does it makes sense you know and come up with your own conclusion and if you come up with the conclusion that yes it does make sense I got to keep on this path it will lead to good things then you gotta go for it the other thing is is that if you do fail the world is not going to end. You got to make sure that that's true as well. The world is not going to end. People are going to be safe. Uh, they will be living, <laughs> you know. Um, if it's a life or death situation, then obviously you're going to have to spend a lot more time really thinking, is that the right thing to do? 
Okay, but I can tell you that anything is possible with enough co common sense and effort. Effort and common sense. They have to go hand in hand, okay? Now let's go on to the next question here, which is, um, the next question here is, do you have illustrated children's books? Any advice to get a book published? Make your own children's book. Do I have any uh, children's books? I've worked on children's books. I've done covers for children's books. Have I written my own? No. I did make an animated uh, comic book with three friends. You know, my wife, Cassidera, uh and uh, Studio NX, Jim Bryson, and Adam Jeffcoat. So we did make a children's book. Um, but I can tell you that one of the best places to meet publishers and get in touch with publishers and stuff like that, New York Comic Con. New York Comic Con is totally the place to be. Or if you're more interested in like uh, French comics, Angoulême is really great for that as well. But, you know, all in all, Nothing is stopping you from making your own children's book. Especially with nowadays, you don't even have to print that many. You know, you could print a few hundred. Um, you know, you could print... Sometimes you could print just a hundred, right? You probably have to pay a lot more, but, uh, you know, printing out a hundred books could be a great idea. Say you're printing out 500 books, right? It's a hardcover book. Uh, a lot of times you can get that for, depending how many pages it is, what the size is, but if it's a decent size with not that many pages, then I'd say you're looking at around maybe five or six dollars a book times 500, you know, less than three thousand dollars to print your first run um, it is a good chunk of change but at the same time it's not 50 grand you know a lot of us we can save up in our jobs or whatever that might be uh, and get that started and that's how i started you know we saved up enough to make four books at that time you need to print a minimum of a thousand books uh, before anybody would even take your job. So it is way more expensive uh, back then. Okay, let's go on to the next question here, which is... So the next question says, I've noticed that I've gotten a serious case of head and shoulders syndrome, drawing just expression-heavy faces and their shoulders. What exercises can I do to take advantage to take advantage of the expressions of the body and the hands I'm looking through my sketchbook and I'm wishing I saw more completed characters that's a really good question um, well the great thing is is that you've identified your problem areas uh, you got to just try to actively do those. That one's a pretty simple one. You know, go through the failures. Go through drawing drawings that aren't as good as before. Because that's totally what's going to happen, right? You're going to start drawing things that aren't as good as those wonderful faces and shoulders that you drew and are very comfortable with. Um, Right? So when that, when you just go towards bodies, and you know, trust me, you're not the only person. Tons of people have the same kind of problems. Go through just trying to draw bodies, drawing hands. Don't even draw faces anymore. 
right? Really go for gestures. Look at how other people do it. Look at um, great movies, pause movies and such. And if you don't have the capital to you know, buy a whole bunch of movies, you can always look up scenes and look up things on YouTube. Watch, pause, draw it out. And don't be afraid about going through a whole bunch of failures because struggling is the brain telling you it's working hard. It's pushing past its limits that it's used to, you know, and that's where the growth happens. The only real failures are the good opportunities and ideas that are never put into action. So put this into action. Just start with, you know, I've been very open with the whole thing where, like, I could draw women, but it's not my best thing. I don't feel like it's the best thing that I can draw. Um, it's... I'm much more comfortable drawing creatures and such, but I will still draw women because I'm practicing to getting to getting better. Right? A lot of times I don't show those drawings, perhaps, um, and a bunch of times I do. You know, the most important thing is that I'm doing it. I'm trying it. Now, if you feel like, oh, I know how to draw hands, I know how to draw bodies, I know the whole principles behind it, I know that they shouldn't be stiff, I know that they need to be natural, I know that subtleties are important to make it feel natural, I know all this stuff. Well, that doesn't mean that you're intelligent about the subject. Because true intelligence intelligence isn't knowing many things it's using the things you know in the best ways possible just not knowing doesn't mean any or just knowing it really doesn't mean anything it only means stuff when you actually use what it is that you know or you think you know and the only way to truly know whether or not you know these things is to do them. And the greatest thing about this is that you'll also know what you don't know. And then you can start to figure those things out. That's why art is just awesome. I love it. So let's go on to the next... Uh, let's go on to the next question here, which is, what is the most important habit to build apart from drawing every day? Wow, there are so many. Um, biggest thing, biggest thing is your attitude, your or perhaps your philosophy. But actually, your attitude is a result of your philosophy. So I guess I would say philosophy first. You know, what do you believe makes good art? What do you believe makes you a successful artist if what you feel is oh being a uh, being a successful artist just means having a job in art well that's very different than a person that is saying well being a successful artist means that I am working with the top people in my industry or I am um, I'm changing stuff you know, with my art. Like uh, Ai Weiwei, you know, with his art you know, from China, doing all this revolutionary stuff, really changing things. Banksy, you know, things like that. Um, sorry, I'm just reading a whole bunch of different questions right now but yeah your philosophy and then your attitude you know all these things I'm talking I'm talking about all these things uh, in a way where I really I feel like they're even more important than drawing every day 
because that's the fuel that makes you draw every day. That's the fuel that makes you try for bigger things, bigger and better things. And another hugely important thing that is so underrated, and you don't really feel the effects of this until you do it for a while, is that you're constantly trying to pass on good vibes. It doesn't cost you anything to give someone a genuine compliment. You know, so try to give good vibes to everybody that you meet. Put on a big smile. You know, make a practice of it. Practice your smile. And greet people with genuine enthusiasm, genuine interest in what they want to do or what they're doing or their lives, you know. Um, so some really good questions here. Let's go on to the next one, which is, do you uh, use a checklist or steps in any phase of drawing and painting? If yes, can you share some? So, um, checklist. You know, I, I, okay. I'm trying to break it down into some simpler thoughts here. So first big thought, right? First big thought is what's the most important thing about whatever it is I'm going to paint? If it's, if it's more about the color, then I'll start off with the color. If it's more about uh, lighting, then I'll start off with the lighting. And if it's a very complex very intricate structure that I might just start off with the structure of it and then colorize it later. So this one, for example, I'm starting off with color, right? Because I have this general idea of this very green uh, painting. The first one, I started off with more structure than anything, you know, or actually, no, I, I, started off with the general idea of a uh, color scheme. So yeah, I would think about either I'm thinking about uh, the most general colors in my painting. You know, and what is the idea here? Is it more yellow on the top than it is on the bottom? Is there a general kind of idea? Right, and then I'll attack the most important thing about that idea. So if it's you know if it's the structure of it, the texture, the lighting, whatever that might be, that's how I would start the painting or drawing. When it comes to capturing a character in action. How do you decide on which moment to draw? Well, that is also something that I, I, I am always struggling with, you know. Um, but I think something that has helped me is just going back to the basics. Is it clear? Is it a clear silhouette? Okay, check. Are the shapes uh, interesting group of shapes? So in other words, is it the same shape over and over again? Are you really um, able to play around with the shapes and have varieties of shapes uh, in a clever way? Um, so I'm just reading some other questions here. But generally, you know, that's how I start. Start off with the most important down to the least important, try not to, I don't try to kind of imagine everything, even though on the good days I can do that, um, or, you know, I can visualize a lot more of whatever it is I'm going to do. If I can't, then I just try to think about the most important things, visualize those things first before going on. Um, And a big one, a big one on my checklist is stepping away from your painting, 
taking a little break, coming back, taking a look at it, you know, five, ten minutes later, reevaluating. Okay. Next question here is what's up next for you guys after Alice through the looking glass? Uh, I can't say. You know, a lot of times that's the only thing about these things is that a lot of times we can't say, I, you know, I could say some of the things that, um, that we've been up to, uh, you know, I could definitely talk about my own. We're doing a bunch of workshops still, you know, Schoolism Live has been just traveling the globe. It's been so awesome doing these workshops, organizing these workshops, because I've never been able to travel to so many awesome places, meet so many amazing people, if it wasn't for doing all these workshops. So thank you to all of you out there that have come to a Schoolism workshop, you know, joined us, learned a bunch, told your friends, brought more friends the next time. Thank you to all you guys because none of this would be possible if it wasn't for you. I really, really mean that. Um, so some things that you can totally get on is number one, Stockholm, October 3rd and 4th. You're going to be doing a workshop with production designer Mike Yamada from Disney. Production designer, by the way, is the highest level artist you can get on a film because you are in charge of not just a team but team leaders of teams you know it's a very high level job and that's going to be such an honor to have Mike Yamada from Disney uh, I'm going to be teaching Luis Gonzalez from Pixar is going to be teaching Jason Seiler uh, from you know, Time Magazine, Rolling Stone, all the editorial, big editorial things is going to be teaching. Um, and Terrell Whitlatch, creature expert extraordinaire, the six of us in Stockholm, October 3rd and 4th. You can find out more info on Schoolism. Okay, schoolism.com. And then there is... Uh, Let's see here. Colorado, October 24th, 25th. I'm going to be teaching. Steven Silver, character designer, is going to be teaching. Carla Ortiz, um, amazing live action artist again. She's going to be teaching. Jeff Turley, production designer. He's going to be teaching. And Tara Whitlatch, Colorado. Okay, and you can, of course, you can go on to Schoolism to find out more info about that. And uh, this is one that is totally first time announced, pretty much. It's not even announced on the site yet, but look out for Dubai, November 6th and 7th. That is going to be incredible. I'm coming to Dubai. I'm bringing some friends. So get ready. It's going to be good. So far, Nathan Falx is going to be coming. The incredible, the masterful. One of my artistic heroes, Nathan Falx, as well as Wes Burt, Transformers, G.I. Joe, uh, does the most incredible drawings. you got to check this guy out. Wes Burt, he's going to be there as well. It's going to be fantastic. Um, so there you go. Let's go on to the next question here, which is, did you take fine arts in college for this career? What course did you take? I took animation. You know, I learned how to animate cartoons. Um, how did I learn how to paint and draw? You got to just do it. You got to, you know... Painting and drawing was something that I really had to learn by myself. I think the best thing that I learned in school was life drawing. To just, 
And that wasn't even learning life drawing. It was learning little bits. And then it was just mostly just practice, 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 practice. Okay, so I think the main thing is look for the great teachers to teach you the things that you want to learn. Don't just look into a school. Look into their teachers as well. There's great schools out there. But then there's always bad teachers, at least some, in great schools as well. And vice versa. There's great teachers sometimes in really bad schools. But the most important thing is not the school that you go to, but the person that you're learning from. Okay? Uh, which is the whole entire point of why I started schoolism in the first place. Because it wasn't just for other people to learn it was for me to continue my learning process as well you know and to create somewhere where you can get professional education not just semi-professional like the top level education okay so that's what i would recommend whether you're in school or you're not whether you're totally you know registered for a uh registered for a college or not schoolism oh before ralph vander hoven uh before you i'm sorry if i butchered your name but before you go i just want to show a couple of the people that uh, submitted something for chew stream and you're one of them so thank you so much for submitting way to go awesome job big shout out to you um and I want to show a couple more, some really great submissions this this time. And that's right, if you do the streams, don't forget to upload it with the hashtag ChewStream. Okay, and then I'll be able to find these things. Okay, so thank you so much for submitting your stuff. And... Uh, for everybody else, don't forget to submit your exercises as well because I, I'm always going to post um, more and more people and their uh, exercises, okay? So, almost done here with the uh, questions. Next question says, uh, what do you like yourself more, uh, sketching digital or pen and paper? I like both. You know, I really do. I love drawing traditionally. I love it, love it, love it. I love doing digital paint. So I have to kind of share my time, really. And I'll go through phases where I just love doing acrylic painting, for example. And then I'll just be into nothing but watercolor, for example. I think that's a healthy thing to go through stages, you know, because every time you go through a period of time where you're just doing nothing but such and such um, exercise, and then you come back to your the things that you usually do, you always have something to add to your main arsenal, you know, of uh, artistic skills. Okay, next question here. When it comes to capturing a character in action, how do you decide on... Okay, I already answered that one. Uh, next question is, do you have any routine to avoid frustration when an illustration doesn't go the way you want? For sure. And this is just for frustrations in general. Frustrations in general. Okay, first you got to really kind of commit to the whole idea that do you want to be a person that's happy? Do you want to be a person that's positive and cheerful? And once you can say yes to that, then here comes the next part. Separate yourself from that organ in your head called a brain. The brain is like your stomach, it's like your lungs, it's like your muscles. It's something in your body that helps you live. 
it is not you. So, in other words, when, when you don't want to have an upset stomach, sometimes your stomach just gets upset anyways. Well, same with your brain. Sometimes when you don't want to be upset, your brain starts to get you upset anyway. Starts to flood your, you know, starts to flood your mind with all of these chemicals that get you riled up. And really, physiolog, you know, scientifically, that's what's happening, right? Dopamine gets us, you know, in a happier state. Um, serotonin gets us in a happier state things like this adrenaline you know could be dangerous sometimes stuff like that so the idea is to separate yourself from your brain and when you start to get frustrated right when you start to get frustrated at your illustration or start to get frustrated at somebody else take a step back and notice that your brain is getting frustrated. Your brain is sending all of these chemicals into your head to make you frustrated, to make you upset. So just take the time to just think about that, absorb that, realize that, and go, huh, my brain is flooding my head with all of these chemicals that are making me upset. If you can constantly catch yourself like that and go, but I'm not an upset person. I'm a happy, positive person. And I'm not going to let that stuff get me upset. Take a deep breath. Realize what your brain is doing. And realize that when you're frustrated with your illustrations, it's only because your brain is trying to lift up this giant weight you know it's trying to exercise trying to lift up this giant weight and perhaps unable to do it right now but is that effort going to pay off in other words if you're always trying to lift this giant weight in the exercise room you know, and you don't hurt yourself doing it, of course, but you're trying to constantly lift up this weight. Is it still helping your muscles, even though you haven't seen the weight move? Yes. You're giving your muscles exercise, just like when you are super frustrated, painting and drawing, it's not working out. That's okay, because your brain, you know, you've been exercising. You've been artistically exercising. Just like this exercise here, if it's hard, if you are frustrated, good. If you're super relaxed, just doing it effortlessly, then I say try putting in more effort. Perhaps it's a little too easy for you. Perhaps you're not aiming high enough with your ideas. You know, perhaps you were doing the composition that I'm doing now, and you just choose chose to uh, paint a pine, uh, you know, one of those traffic uh, pylons upside down. Perhaps that was your whole entire idea with that uh, composition, and perhaps that's just way too simple. Okay. Next question here is, um, okay, next question goes, are there any tips or books you would recommend to help expand or on creating dynamic compositions? Every time I start thumbnailing, the ideas feels too compressed. Um, there's actually this uh, Andrew Loomis book that I bought recently. Let me see if I can find it on my shelf. No. I can't, but... Um, I would just look it up on Amazon, I think. 
composition generally what's a great way to kind of help out your composition is sketching from great films you know look for films look look up films that have won the Oscar for cinematography they always have great compositions you know download on iTunes or whatever uh, one of these films and just start watching them pause sketch try to sketch something based off of that composition and so on and so forth and start to memorize these things figure out these things why did they stop this building at this point why does the the actor stop at this point or start at this point so on and so forth and you'll start to build up your mental library of aspects of great composition okay next question here um, I'm planning some comical nerdy prints how can I find and connect to a market and convert them to buyers if they are truly comical and they're truly appealing then when you put them you know on any kind of all you need to do is find a site that has a lot of traffic you know go to the cities of the internet don't go to the deserted islands which would be the blog that you have that nobody knows about you know go on to the forums go on to actually Facebook is is a really great avenue for viral content um, next question here okay so making good art when sorry it goes uh, making good art when it's important usually makes you get stuck in thinking it's too important to screw up the result is a bad illustration any tips on letting go do some quick thumbnails beforehand do some quick studies beforehand and make them quick do a bunch of them so then you will get used to um, going on to the main one but generally I don't think like that don't think about if you screw up or things like that just think about um, trying hard if you're trying hard okay and your painting is not successful you're still success successful because if you're always trying hard with common sense okay bracket with common sense it has to be with common sense if you're trying hard with common sense you're going in the right direction things will work out okay next question here is do you see the two stream exercises at, at, on Tumblr as well? Um, I haven't actually been looking on Tumblr, but that's a great idea. I will start looking on Tumblr. You know, so hashtag your stuff, two stream, if you're putting it on Tumblr. Okay. Let's go on to the next question here, which is with what you guys are doing with schoolism by cutting out the middleman in education where do you think education is going in the future with the internet I could tell you where I hope things will go you know I hope to see the the person in Bangladesh that never would have ever expected to be able to work from Bangladesh on a Hollywood film be able to do that and earn a amazing living for themselves I would love to see everybody get a fair shake that's the whole entire purpose of this is so that everybody can have affordable education that's not just okay it's the top level education you know professional education that you can get and I feel like if I could make schoolism a safe place for people to do that um, then we will be turbocharging the whole artistic community because now information will be running 
rampant. You know, it would be so accessible to everybody. People in schools will still be going to schools. That's how I feel. Um, but then a lot of people might just choose to do schoolism anyways on top of their school to give themselves an advantage over everybody else. And people in studios will be doing the same. I really hope that these subscriptions will be the, the ultimate equalizer for education, for art, and make it much more, much, much more about the effort that you put in as opposed to where you were blessed to be raised, where you grew up, you know, who were your parents, how financially stable they were, things like that. One of the best emails that we got so far was a person that um, is a bus driver and has three boys, right? And one especially, he knows is talented. He knows is special. He, this kid just gets it more than the other kids. But he happened to be living in a family that cannot afford the traditional university or college education. So even though everybody can tell that this little boy uh, has the talent, the dad felt he was unable to nurture his boy's talent. And now with schoolism subscriptions, now that person is able to. Now this kid, you know, now it's up to the kid. Whether he stays with it, whether he totally absorbs all the knowledge and becomes 10 billion times even better and totally could become a superstar or doesn't but if he doesn't now that was all on him you know and that's what I would like to see uh, education going in the future it's going to be all about the people that give the effort not the people that could afford the education okay so that's it for today thank you so much to everybody for tuning in hang out and uh, ask me your questions and I hope everything helped I hope you like the exercise definitely post it on your uh, social media and I'll see you next time alright take care everybody